Hi, my name is Dr. Kyle Montgomery. In this video, I'll be talking about Kirchhoff's voltage law. So again, uh, Kirchhoff uh, stands for a guy, Gustav Kirchhoff, a German physicist, worked in the late 1800s. Uh, great strapping guy, huge beard and, and the like. Uh, his Kirchhoff's voltage law, which we denote as just KVL typically, again, is a really core uh, central principle and idea in doing circuit analysis. And we'll see it uh, come up multiple occasions here. So it's very important that we have a real firm understanding of what this uh, exactly is telling us. So what the law tells us specifically is that the sum uh, very similar to Kirchhoff's current law, but now with voltages, is the sum of all the voltages, since it's the voltage law, of course, um, around a given loop has to be, again, equal to zero. Okay. So if we look at a circuit such as the one that we have here, we could actually define a, a variety of different loops to, um, to write equations that describe Kirchhoff's voltage law um, around a given loop. So if we look at um, how we could define a loop here. A loop is simply defined as, as I have to start and stop at the same point. And so with this very basic circuit that we have here, we could actually define three different loops. So one maybe around the left side of the circuit here, one maybe around the right side of the circuit here, and then actually I could also define a loop going around the entire circuit all the way around. Now we'll find that we actually do not need to write equations for every one of these loops, but again, just to, to uh, show that it is possible to write equations for any of those given paths. So in order to uh, come up with equations for describing what Kirchhoff's voltage law tells us, we need to, again, define some specific voltages for each of the given elements that there's gonna be some voltage uh, drop or rise, depending on what the given element is. And now again, this is somewhat arbitrary as to how we define this, and if it comes out that we get a negative quantity for some voltage, Voltage, that simply means that we need to swap the polarity to make it, you know, a quote unquote positive value. So if I go around to each circuit element and just start defining a given voltage, we can uh, begin to work through the problem here. So if I go plus, uh, let's call this V1, plus to minus across our resistor, uh, plus to minus, I'll call this V2 across this capacitor in the middle here. I have an inductor over here. I'll, I'll say the voltage drop there is V3 plus to minus. And then my resistor over here, we'll say is V4, again, plus to minus. And then my voltage source, the polarity is already defined for me, uh, given what it is, and I will just name that as voltage V5. So now let's begin to work out the actual equations for describing uh, the paths across uh, around a couple of these different loops. Okay, so first let's look at the loop on the left side of the circuit here. Okay, again, I'm gonna start at this point in the corner here and we're just gonna work our way around this loop and add up all the voltages. So if I come across a voltage drop, I'm gonna indicate that as a positive quantity. And if I come across a voltage rise, meaning from negative to positive, I'm gonna indicate that as a negative quantity. So as, as I see here, I, I come across this voltage V1 first. So this is V1. And let me indicate that this is on the left hand loop. Okay. So that voltage V1 is the first one. Then we have this voltage drop again from plus to minus V2. So that's going to be a plus V2. And then I work my way around. I come to this voltage source. Now again, the voltage source is now is actually a rise because I'm going from negative to positive. So it's going to be minus this V5. And that's my last voltage that I have in this given loop. So again, Kirchhoff's voltage law tells me that the sum of all those has to be equal to zero. Okay. Now let me do the same thing here for the uh, right hand side. Okay, so let's start maybe right here. Again, it doesn't matter where I start in this loop, I'll, I'll start and end at the same place. Uh, it's completely arbitrary, but I'll start here. I see that I have a voltage drop V3 is my first one, so that's gonna be a positive quantity. Now I have voltage drop V4. Again, that's a drop, so I'm gonna say that's a positive quantity. And then I come up here through this capacitor, which is I've defined the voltage V2, but going from minus to plus because I have to follow the direction of this loop. So again, that's gonna be a minus V2 now equals to zero, okay? Now these two equations then are what we really need to do the analysis and we would certainly need other laws such as Ohm's law to get to a final solution, but this helps us to get to the point uh, where we need to be. Now just a couple of notes, again, when I've defined my voltages across each of these elements, I've defined a positive and negative, but the uh, relationship that you choose is completely arbitrary um, as to how you initially define that. It doesn't really matter in, in any way you do that. Second point is that if I denote when I'm writing my equations a voltage drop from plus to minus as a positive quantity as I did here 
I just have to be sure that any voltage rise is a negative quantity, but I could do the exact opposite. I could say a voltage drop is a negative quantity and a voltage rise is a positive quantity. As long as I'm consistent in, in how I do my analysis on the entire circuit, I will still get the exact same answer uh, regardless of how I do that. So this is just introducing the very uh, core concept of Kirchhoff's voltage law, and we'll see more, of exa more examples of how we can apply this uh, in other examples in the future. Thank you.